What is up, guys? Welcome back to Punk Rock Raider. Today we are coming to you with the newest album by a selection of punk bands. We cover their debuts last time we were on here, so it's going to be the exact same bands with their newest albums. We're going to see how they stack in the tier list. We're doing this tier list style, two per tier, and just see where everything lands. So, you know, we've got no effects, we got the offspring, bad religion, friends will rom, less than Jake, all coming up. Uh, on this tier list, but uh, guys, uh, uh, how was it uh, listening through all these albums? And are you ready to get into this? Let's go. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be a fun. It's gonna be a fun morning. You're all the types of guys that I would love to hang out with, even Dylan, despite what YouTube comments <laughs> yeah. say. So, and for the for the record, I'd like to say I have no idea what I'm talking about, and I feel sorry for my family. <laughs> I I think your family's I think you're a blessing. I think you're a Christmas miracle, Dylan. So I don't know, Elliot. There's there's some tension here between us. I don't know if I can uh, reciprocate. <laughs> it's all good. Well, let's, let's just make out already. Let's get into it. <laughs> Give a uh, hold on. Which way? Wait. There you go. <laughs> all right. Let's get. Anywho, what's the first album we're talking about? Over there. Uh, no effects double oh. album. Oh boy! Yeah, so going we'll for, who's going first? The Zenith. We'll start, of start with you. Yeah, we'll start off with uh, Lewis. We'll start off with uh, <laughs> Lewis. What do you have to say about No Effects' double album? How, how was a treat re-listening to this, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, what can I say about double album that I didn't say about the shit I took this morning? Uh, no, I mean, I don't <laughs> really like this record. I, nothing's really changed. Um, later, later No Effects. Later No Effects. Not my favorite stuff. Uh, he pretty handily um, handed the uh, half album its ass a couple weeks ago or months ago at this point. But this one, um, I don't really like. I don't really like single album either. Um, maybe I'm just a hater on this No Effects, and I know some people think this new stuff is good. But um, I guess Derby Crashing is okay. I mean, there's a couple decent songs on here, but uh i in the scope of the rest of these records i'm going to easily put this one as my first d tier i don't really enjoy this i'll never go back and really listen to these albums again really unless they come up on shuffle and i'm like oh that one's okay but yeah d tier easy for me um sorry to hate on no effects but there you go uh dylan yeah yeah dylan um the first two songs are pretty good yeah darby crashing and my favorite enemy um, I don't know. There's not a whole lot else notable on here. Uh, I'm going to put it in C tier. C as in Carlitos. Really? Huh. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I really listened to this, tried to give it with like an open mind. And uh, I still think this album sounds like garbage. Like it sounds really tingy, really clingy. It sounds really cheaply produced for some reason. Outside of Fat Mike's bass which sounds pretty good and i think it's really the only thing that makes darby crash in your party stand out because outside of that it's still just a very mediocre no effects song has a really cool bass line fat mike cannot sing on this the song topics are still really bad fuck day six is this like obnoxious kind of like bougie going to like a bougie rehab facility and then be like man day six is the worst it's just like this out of touch weird stuff alcoholic these dumb pun things that he's continued to do since like i think self-entitled i would say this is the worst album on here by far and i think it uh matches up with no effects also being the worst album on the last one of these as well so the debut is the worst and their newest record is the worst i still think this is terrible it's, and it's I, poetic it rhymes it's beautiful yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> so that's all i have to say john what do you have to say about double album yeah so i'll echo a lot of what you guys said but i i will say like during my listening this week i i didn't feel like it was as bad as when i initially heard it i think like the the first the a side is it's it's not good um but it's not it's not as bad as i thought um with that said i still think it's a bottom two record on the list uh, it's better than single album i came around to that a little bit i think single album is probably the worst no effects album now but i'm i'm gonna go d tier with you guys as well 
I think these two albums, though, they make like self entitled to me seem like a masterpiece, oh, yeah. and I don't yeah. even really like. Oh, and yeah. I don't even really like that one that much. <laughs> like, it's, big deal, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first. I mean, like at least self entitled has what's that first song with the dual vocals? Uh, Seventy two hookers. Yeah. Or something. No, oh, no, no, that's not. That's, uh, that's terrible. That song sucks. I, I was, I was oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Like I was thinking of uh, what's it called? I mixed them up. Last first ditch effort. effort, first ditch effort, whatever. Yeah. That one, that that one's even better than I think self entitled. Yeah, 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 that, that, that one's, one's better. Yeah, so but yeah, yeah these suck. So sorry, no effects. You used to be one of my favorites, but now we're gonna flush you down into the D tier. So what do we got <laughs> next coming up? Uh, I believe next. I want to say it's Pennywise. Yeah, it's Pennywise. Oh, all right. All right. So Pennywise. You want me to go. Uh, if you want to go again, go for it. You know what? You want to keep. Yeah, we've been doing kind of wild card jumping around. So let's just stay in sequence, I guess. So Pennywise, uh, never going to die. So this record, I was kind of lukewarm on. I thought it was pretty good when it first came out. I thought it was better than um, what was it? The yesterdays that came out before this. I thought that was OK, uh, pretty good. Uh, but man, I really like this record. Um, I really think the a side's really strong i think the b side's pretty strong too um this is like coming around i'm i'm I, i'm really excited for anything else pennywise because i'll be honest i really like this record i think track four uh live all you can is like one of the standouts but i like a lot of songs on this record so i'm gonna give this one my first s tier man i'm a i'm a pennywise fanboy i love this record so i'm uh, i'm all for it sorry so i'm going s tier in the scope of all these other records love it all right, Dylan, what do you have to say about uh, Pennywise? Never going to die. Gonna, I'm going to shock the world because I'm putting Pennywise in the S tier in both videos, the first album and the most recent <laughs> album video. Okay. <laughs> really? Um, maybe I'm becoming a Pennywise fanboy. Uh, I never Seems really like disliked it. them, but there's some... It's fun to poke fun at them for obvious reasons with the lyrics and stuff. Uh, anyway, I mean, there's a lot of songs that remind me of, like, Land of the Free era, especially Live While You Can with the octave run on the guitar. Uh, I get Pennywise are men of the people. They give their fans what they want, and they don't, uh, differ from that, despite what that one guy said about they can't write a chorus. I think they can write... Perfectly fine choruses. choruses. Yeah, I think it's one of their stronger. They're parts. like one of the best chorus writers out yeah. there. It's ridiculous. And yeah. you know, I know. I, you know, I was thinking of you, Dylan, yesterday because I was actually listening to About Time yesterday. And I haven't listened to it in a long time. There's some good, good lyrics on that one. I don't, I don't <laughs> think you give Pennywise their due sometimes. They're not bad. All right. I'm just yeah, strolling. Just, all right. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm not. This is the first time I've listened to this one. Um, and when I first listened to it, I gave it two listens. I thought it was just an okay Pennywise album. And I listened to it again, and I still kind of feel like it's just an okay Pennywise album, but it's a little better. So maybe if this sat with me a little longer, I'd get... It's definitely, like, co like pretty competent. Like, it's pretty much just straightforward, a Pennywise record. It's just, to me, I feel like it's a little... It's a little bland, it's like some of the later Pennywise stuff, where I feel like I've, I've just heard this all before, but... If that's what they want to do, I always remember Lewis saying there's like three constants in life, death, taxes, and Pennywise <laughs> dropping the same album every two, three years. And I think it's very true. This is definitely like if you're a Pennywise fan, you're never going to be disappointed, except maybe by The Fuse. I have not listened to it yet, but <laughs> apparently that one's not great. But this is going... It's okay. This is my B tier. I think this is like a solid record, but it doesn't do anything that blows me away. I think there are a lot of great like technical aspects of it. And they're obviously Fletcher's like killing it on the guitar in this one still and and jim still sounds pretty good so unlike some i think jim sounds the band. best in a long time i think jim sounds really good yeah on he this sounds record. awesome yeah. on this one yeah. but go yeah. ahead john where are you putting this all right so i i was thinking s or a for this for this pennywise record i really enjoy this one i think there's three standout albums on the list and this is definitely one of them i i forget what song i had in my top five pennywise Songs. I think it was All the Ways You Can Die on the B-side, but I, I like um, Can't Save You Now, uh, Live While You Can. The first two are really good. I think I'm going to go A, but I may, I may end up moving it up. Um, yeah, let's go A tier on Never Gonna Die. This is a really good record. I think I had it in either A or B in Pennywise uh, tier list a couple years ago, so let's go A. 
All right, and we'll do the next band here, which I think is, I want to say Bad Religion, right? You move the offspring. Oh, there. so it's the offspring? That's fine. Yeah. Yep. We'll do the offspring. Right. And John, you'll start us off with the offspring <gasps> here, all right? All right, so this came out like a week ago. Yeah. So it's, and I think every other one on here is at least a year or two, at least a year or two old. So I don't know. I think, and I was saying this right before we started recording, I think Light It Up would be a better song than anything on uh, anything else that I'm going to put in my D tier. With that said, The Offspring are, they have to be one of the laziest bands ever. Like at, at this point, they're putting out like an album every five, six years and It'll be 10 songs with like eight filler tracks and one single and one okay song. So I think I'm gonna go C. I don't want to, but like, you can't tell me Light It Up is not a better song than anything on double album by like a significant margin. <clears throat> so based on that, I'm gonna go C tier. We could tell you that, but it would not be truthful. Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know. Dylan's got it in C, so I'm curious where he's going to put Supercharged. Um, Supercharged to me, I don't know. I think outside of like Light It Up being like an okay Offspring album, I went back and listened to it, and I like it even less now. I think it, it feels just very uninspired. Um, it's definitely better than Double Album by, I think I say, a wide margin. Yeah. I would say almost every record on here is better than Double <laughs> Album by a wide margin. I think Double Album's the worst record on here by far. Um, Easy. But, yeah, easily. But I still think it's a very mediocre Offspring record. I don't get anything out of it. I don't get the Offspring Defenders coming out for this record at all. So I'm going to put this in the D tier. I... I I think the, the pop songs were grating. I think most of the throwback songs were boring and stale. And I don't think this does anything that deserves moving up the ranks. I don't think this is an experimental. I don't think it's taking a risk. I think it's bland and safe, and it falls safely in D tier. So, uh, Dylan. I think it's fine. It's an improvement over the last two Offspring records. And... Uh... I stand by what I really like, Come to Brazil, still. Um, and Light It Up is good. And Get Some, uh, Hanging by a Thread is growing on me. And I figured out what it reminds me of in the previous Offspring catalog, but I can't remember now. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a beat here. And, uh, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. I look forward to all the hate comments from you delusional 50-year-old offspring fans. <laughs> boy. Oh boy. Well, you're you're the you're the shining example of an offspring fan here. Yeah, the, damn. The panel, Dylan. <laughs> so, come Lewis. to Brazil. I think I think Dylan needs to come to Jesus cuz this is no way you're a B tier, Jesus <laughs> Louise. No, I mean Sound it's like uh, a comment or no. Where are you, where are you uh, putting no, it, Louis? I think it's, uh, I actually, well, you know, I was surprised. I thought this record was better than I thought it was going to be. I think I gave it like a six, right? So um, I think there's some bright spots in it, but I think like, you know, you guys have said, there's a lot of shit on this too, especially the pop songs. It's very unbalanced. It's all over the place. Like, I don't, it feels like they tried to make a record for nobody. I mean, it's a strange record to me, but you know, some of this stuff was interesting, but I think in the scope of these records, like, I mean, uh, they're by, they're, uh, looking at this list they're easily in my least favorite of the bands on this list anyway so uh i'm gonna have to put them in d tier but with the caveat that it's significantly better than double album so yes. <laughs> uh, like i mean even yeah so i mean it's it's a d tier but just because of the company it's keeping i would say like on another maybe a couple other it's to be a c or b for me so it's okay all right all right Next is just just so because I have the order. It's some forty one heaven and hell, twenty songs, twenty songs. Yeah. So uh, Dylan, songs. do you want to start us off with this one here? Yeah, I think this is a pretty good album. Um, I was cautiously optimistic to quote Mike Herrera about this album, and uh, I don't know. I, I thought it might be a little long winded because it's a double album and all that, but it seemed to go relatively fast. And um, I think it's a good send off album for some 41. So I have Heaven and Hell 
in the A tier. All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll go. I'll go next here, and I think we were like a little harsh on it. I think we are pretty pot. I think this got like a seven out of ten or something for me and John. We originally reacted to it like around that. And honestly, going back to it, I think it is better than it is when you're just sitting down doing a first reaction, listening to 20 of these songs, especially the B-side where they start going into some of the alt rock post grunge type choruses where they sound like three days grace. I still don't really like those songs, but I think the songs that are good on here are like actually really good. Like waiting on a twist of fate is a banger. Uh, Future primitive. It sounds like a Pennywise song. Bad mistake. Sounds like an offspring song. <laughs> so uh, rise up and stranger in these times are really good b-side tracks of this so i mean i think when it comes to like the songs this the off the sum 41 has like some of the strongest songs here and i think i'm gonna go with dylan and put heaven and hell in my a as well man uh john what do you have to say about sum 41 yeah i think i was too hard on it when it came out but i i still don't think it's that that good there's a uh, there's definitely a handful of good songs, but if there wasn't, it's 20 songs, then, you know, there's there's a major problem. But I would say there's, like, maybe five standouts across the 20, and it's, like, at least 50% fluff. Um, so, like, the volume works for it and against it, uh, but I, I still think it's a B. Like, it's it'll be, like, one of the best of the Bs, I think. So, let's go right in the middle for some 41. All right, Lewis, what do you have to say about Sum 41? Heaven X Hell. X Hell. So this was the first time I listened to the album all the way through. So it was kind of with fresh ears. Um, I had like listened to a couple of the tracks, I think, before we went to go see them. But I wasn't super excited about this album coming out. I didn't really care. But um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to probably fall into the beats here with John. I agree. There's a, It seems quite long, uh, but the production quality is pretty good. And, uh, you know, like the standouts are quite good. And they obviously know how to write like a pop punk song. Like a lot of them were pretty, pretty good. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I, I think it, right in the middle of this group, uh, you know, will I come back to this record? I'll probably come back to songs, but it's significantly better than a lot of the records on here. So, yeah, B tier. I'm good with <laughs> Yeah, I think the length works against it a good yeah. bit. <laughs> so yeah. It does drag it down. I don't know. Like, I, so I, yeah, I didn't song agree, sounds so I'll similar too. Like that's, yeah, that's I the watch problem. your react video. I didn't watch your react video. How long was it? Like five hours? Like I mean, because like, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was it was a it long was close time. to two hours, right? Yeah, I remember yeah. us taking a break. Not not the full, not the full video, but us recording it. Yeah, it was a long time. We took a break in between heaven and the yeah. hell side <laughs> as yeah. well so we had to and i mean also they have that painted black cover which i still think is so stupid to do yeah. a painted black cover in 2024 but especially we'll do, since uh, gob already did it perfectly but it's all and right. the and, <laughs> and tom factors in the band like it was so weird yeah so it it's probably it like hey guys you know it'd be really funny <laughs> if i did a painted black cover with both my bands <laughs> <laughs> I've ever seen Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon. Well, we did this radical cover for it. We should just cover it again. <laughs> I have it. That's on a, a list of movies. Oh, that movie. That movie right? rules. Yeah, it's really it good. does it. Good. Okay, I'll yeah, check yeah. it out. It's it's a list of like I got all these early two thousand horror movies. We're check it out so that I missed. And that but, song features prominently the Gob version. So that's funny. funny. Well, yeah, we'll get to the next one here, which is going to be Bad Religion, Age of Unreason. And I'll start us off here saying that, uh, once again, I've never even listened to this one. A lot of these later uh, legacy punk bands, I think after, like, 2010, I just had no interest in, like, whatever they were pumping out, except for, like, Lagwagon and Propagandi for the most part. Like, I really didn't care to listen to any of the Bad Religion stuff or the Pennywise stuff. But I, I would say this is, like, it's okay. I think there's some good songs on it. It's not it's not bad. I, I don't know what the perception of this album is or the general consensus of it, but I think Do the Paranoid Style is like a really cool song. Lose Your Head is pretty fun. Um I don't know I don't know. I can't I remember Big Black Dog. I don't remember if I liked it or not though, but I <laughs> I just know that one stuck in my mind. I looked down to see what the track was with it. I think it was because I didn't like it. Yeah. Um but I think it's fine. I think it's a decent uh, Bad Religion album. There's some good songs. There's some mediocre songs. And overall, I don't know. I thought it was just okay. So I'll go C-tier with Age of Unreason. Uh, and we'll go to Dylan. 
What do you have to say? Uh, all right, full transparency mm. behind the scenes. I had this in D, but I'm listening to it now. Maybe that's a little harsh. I don't know. He had I feel like with C, dude. <laughs> I do. I can see that. Um. Yeah. Uh, there's that tension there. Um, uh, it's just a little bit. <laughs> the um, I feel like the bad songs really drag it down, which is unfortunate. There's chaos from within, paranoid style. Um, what's the the approach, and uh, what tomorrow brings are all good songs, but then you have like my sanity and I hate that song since now and big black dog. It's just like, man, these are real stinkers. Um, I'm gonna, I'll move it up to C, and uh, reluctantly so. All right, and Lewis, what do you have to say about uh, your one of your favorite bands' newest album, Bad Religion? My fa my favorite band, favorite Bad band. Religion. Yeah. I was uh, I was pretty disappointed when this record came out. Gotta be honest. So like. Coming on the coattails of like True North, which I think is like a true banger, like a great album. Um, had pretty high expectations about like late resurgence of Bad Religion. I mean, I think you guys mentioned most of the decent songs, but overall, I think this album's pretty forgettable. I mean, it's kind of like one of those ones that kind of just blends into the background for me. And <laughs> That's true. Uh, I was, I put it on. I remember I listened to it all the way through. Like I went and I bought the CD, I think like, you know, just cause like, why not? Cause I always owned all their stuff. And I was like, uh, like, I guess maybe I'll listen to that again. And then I've listened to it a couple times since, and I, I just can't, still doesn't have a lot of place of affection for me. So, um, clearly not the worst record in this list, though. Like, pretty benign. The, some of the bad songs are pretty bad, but nothing as bad as anything on like no effects. So, um, I'll put it in C tier. Uh, and it's really just, I mean, if we can get another true north, I would be much happier, but yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it sounds like uh, let the, how I felt about Let the Dominoes Fall when it came out. I really tried to get force myself to like that record, and I just thought it was so <laughs> boring. <laughs> so, but we'll move on to the next. Uh, John didn't go yet, yeah. I don't think. Oh, I'm so sorry. John, I always have to skip somebody. So now I John's know. getting the Dylan treatment. <laughs> so, John, <laughs> what do you have to say about Age of Unreason? I've had this in B, C, and D, and I, I still don't know. Like, like you guys said, do the paranoid style is good. I, I actually really like Candidate. That's my favorite song on here, even though it's like a slower, yeah. slower one. Um, I think I think I'm gonna go B. Honestly, I'm looking at what's left, and I think there's two that I like a little less than it. Uh, there's some bad songs. I, I, when you said Big Black Dog is one of the ones you like, I was very surprised. I think that's my least favorite. Oh, no, no. I was saying I just remember the song. I couldn't remember if I liked yeah, it or not. It's, I it's, just it's a ridiculous look. title, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember looking down when I heard it because like, I was like, this sounds, this song sounds <clears throat> weird or something. I don't think I liked it. I can barely remember. Yeah. I only gave this, like I think, a one listen through. So, yeah. Clifford, the Big Black Dog. <laughs> Yeah, let's go B. Yeah, my my sanity, the approach, and Big Black Dog are all pretty bad songs. But I think they I really think pushed gonna... my sanity too. They thought that was like a good song. I don't yeah. know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the approach. The approach is a good song. Uh, it has that little guitar lead. Cause eh. eh. <laughs> or what's what's the, what's the next band here, John? Uh, we got the Cup of Pestilence. Now the Cup of oh. Pestilence. We'll we'll have we'll have you go first, John on this one i mean i i could i could tell you that well actually i don't know if dylan's gonna put it there because i know something else is on the list uh this is <laughs> this is s tier for me for a couple of pestilence i am a uh unabashed frenzel mark uh i think of the li of the last three frenzel i think i would put this at number three i think that it would go smoke out uh high viz then this uh, but there's there's a lot of good songs on here. I, I love Gone to the Dogs. Uh, Dead Man's Underpants is awesome. Laneway Dave. There's like not a lot of really I, like I can listen to this whole thing. I just think it lacks the standouts of the of the previous two. Like even the last song, I thought it was Yoda, the Yoga, but it was Ketamine, one of the singles, all the way down to track 19. So I'm gonna go S, second best album on the list. All right, Lewis, what do you have to say about Frenzel Rom? 
Yeah, I'm not as big of a friends of Mark as these fellas uh, to my uh, right here, but uh, this is a really good record. Um, I didn't uh, spend a lot of time with this one outside of like when we did them for like uh, the rankings or whatever the matchups. I forget when we did it, but uh, yeah, this is pretty good. And uh, I found myself listening to it twice. Um, so I'm definitely going to come back to it again. Um, I think John mentioned a couple of the standouts. I like, uh, I also enjoyed. Um, called uh what's it called? i'm looking up the name sorry uh those people i enjoyed that song yeah. i thought that was pretty funny uh i mean i just like it's just a good time listening to this record honestly it just it is just a good time overall so uh and yoga uh was a is a standout for me too i really like that song so i'm gonna put this one in a tier i think it's quite good um and i'll definitely be back for more of this one no, Dylan, what do you have to say about Cup of Pestilence? <clears throat> the choice is obvious. It's the S tier. The final S tier goes to the Australian team, Frenzel Rom. And, uh, Mikey. I, I am on the same, same wavelength as John with this being my third favorite of the, the Holy Trinity of recent <laughs> Frenzel Rom albums. Um... <clears throat> But it is still a fantastic album, and it kicks every other album on here's fucking ass. All right. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Put me in the S tier as well. I think this is just like 25 minutes of just kind of back-to-back -back fast uh, Frenzel songs, and there's really uh, nothing wrong with it. I think John's right. The previous two uh, records had better standouts, but, I mean, this one has Gone to the Dog, Dead Man Underpants, like you said. Uh, I think My Neighbor's Planning to Kill Me is, like, a great song. Uh, uh, there's not really, like, a bad song on here. Also, it sounds uh, really good. Like, yeah. uh, the drums and the bass and the guitar and everything just sounds great. I think maybe, like, Jay's vocals, like, could use a little bit more inflection and energy on it. But <clears throat> I think overall, this is, like, a super solid Frenzel record. It's short. It's to the point. It does what it needs to do. And it's the S tier. And so There we go. Look at that. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Lewis sorry, the dude. Black Sheep. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But I, I will be honest. I think the weakest part of Frenzel is the vocals. I think everything else is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, especially general. on the newer one, it's a little droney. Like, it doesn't have as much oomph as I would like it to. But they do. Like, they, there's records that Jay does kind of have a lot more energy on it. And Frenzel, yeah, I mean, it's fun. They're like... As far as musicianship goes, no one really talks about it, but they have like top tier guitar, bass, and drummers in in punk. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like Lindsay, the great guitarist. Um, who's the drummer? I forget. What's that guy's name? He kills it. Though. Steve, Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin, <laughs> the drummer. <laughs> the metronome. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually Robert Irwin, his son. He's really good. All right. No, it's uh, Gordy. Gordy's the drummer. Yeah, Gordy's the drummer. I always remember. Yeah. Gordy kills it, so yeah, they they are have some like top tier musicians. I think you're right. Nobody talks about them in the same vein they do some other well, because musicians. they're not in America. That's why. That's, I mean, that, that's, that might be true. It's so, pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, but, that is probably good. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, next up we've got Lag Wagon Railer, and I'll go first here. Um, I like to fend to this like a little bit where I think it's a it's the worst Lag Wagon record uh, by far, but I still Ooh. think it's overall a pretty good record you don't think it's the worst lag wagon record lewis <laughs> i don't know man i think that's pretty harsh but yeah go on a pretty harsh i mean one of them has to get the the worst treatment right <laughs> i can't think of one that's, yeah i don't know what is, else is worse would than be. it i can't imagine anything else because i'll say this i think this the flaws of this is like it's coming off the heels of hang and this is just kind of an yeah. inferior hang in a lot of ways where I not even just from Joey's vocals who are kind of shot at this point on the record, which uh, sometimes <laughs> he can hit. He can hit stuff sometimes pretty good. Other times it's like like, you know, audibly strained where he just cannot hit these notes and he he's really sounding like his age. And I think that sometimes makes you wince a little bit and you're like, oh, man, he really can't sing this one. And you notice it in during the record. But I mean, the musicianship is really good. Surviving California is like a banger of a song. Uh, the uh, Bubbles really good. Fan Fiction, one of the best songs on here as well. So I think it's got some fantastic songs, but it, it's just not as good as Hang, even 
from a songwriting perspective, and I think it's it's going to go on my C tier along with Bad Religion, but I think it's a better record than the Bad Religion one, I think. So, um, But John, what do you have to say about this one? I'm going to be honest. I am just as likely to listen to this as I am Double Album. That's, I, I got to put it down there. I, I think this is by far the worst Lagwagon album, and I, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't hate it anymore, but I still don't think it's any good. I, I really don't think there's any standouts. It lost a lot of, like, what Hang brought back to the band. It just feels, and I feel like a lot of it is the vocals. Their vocals are just so bad. With all the technology we have today, like, they couldn't make it sound any better. It's just like a, a dying man's last breath album. <laughs> Um, oh, man, dude, yeah. Jesus Christ! Jesus. Holy fuck, dude! <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Deep. Joey's still alive, dude. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Joey, Joey still makes songs, John. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not good ones, but yeah. I'm going Jesus. <laughs> All right, oh, Lewis. What do you have to say about Railer? All right, so let me see if I justify. I mean. So I don't I don't really love this record either and and I think I definitely had my opinion kind of tainted because everyone hated it so much at least you guys <laughs> who I talk to mostly about this stuff but I mean so re- records that I think are on par or maybe slightly where I I don't think Resolve's very good I'll be honest like I don't I know that one's not very good in my opinion and uh, and then Older Brother I know that's yeah. an EP but it's pretty long and that album I, that one sucks so yeah I don't, I don't count that one that one does suck right. but I, I don't know but I don't think I don't think Resolve's really impressive either but I think Hang I I'm gonna go to your point Alex. I, I hangs I mean resolves okay. I mean, but hang is incredible. And I yeah. love hang and it's my favorite lag wagon record. So for that, it's definitely a downgrade for me. Um you know, it's not my D tier, obviously. I, let me see what I had. I have my notes here, so let me see what I put it at. I think I'm gonna put Railer uh, I'm gonna put it in to C. Uh, I think it's deserving of a C spot. I think it definitely has a couple standouts, and I said it earlier. I think uh, Ginny is a pretty fun song. I think it's Oof. a little. I like the vocal. I don't know. There's some fun stuff on that's this. That's my least I'm sorry. favorite. So <laughs> I love that song. I thought it was at least interesting. So that was, uh, not John, that was John's least favorite song. I hate did the that video. song. I think, it, was, I think it, it stands out on the record at least. Even I like I like Terrible as well. I think reasons. Terrible is a pretty good song. I think there's good songs in here. So I kind of like. I don't know. I like. They do. Lagwagon does little weird things like that. So I don't, I'm not a big Lagwagon fan, but this is okay record. So C, yeah. I feel okay about it. It's, you know, whatever. Uh, wish we can go back to Hang Part Two. But Dylan, what do you got to say about it? Uh, this is what I flipped with Bad Religion. I think the Bad Religion album has some higher peaks, and uh, Railer is all valley, no peak. Um, oh no! So it's going in D. <laughs> Uh, I won't beat the dead horse about Joey's <laughs> vocals on the album too much more. Uh, I do want to say they give a shout out to Mr. T Experience on Bubble, which is cool with the Milk Milk Lemonade line. So props for that. Railer. What a terrible. I mean, this is the worst. I think the album art really hurts this record, too. This sucks. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I like the album. I don't think art. it makes much of a difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll learn it's all right. I mean, Lagway has had a way worse album. Like, Double Platinum is definitely a worse album cover than this one. It's pretty bad. But, um, ah. All right, platinum. moving on here. Yeah, next, uh, what do we got next here, John? We got uh, Propagandy Victory Lap. All right, Lewis, take us away. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be my other S tier. Um, I really love this record. Um, you know, it's it's Propaganda. They're one of my favorite bands. They're up there. They're not my favorite band, which is already on this list, living down there in the C tier. But uh, Victory Lap is a really impressive technical record. It's much better than Failed States, which was before this. Um, I, Failed States is pretty, is good. I mean, like, it's technically impressive and stuff, but overall, like, the songwriting is pretty boring. Like, this one has a lot of standouts. It's like, you know, I mean, let me pull up the track list because it just makes it easier. But we obviously have, uh, oh, God, this all fucked up. Sorry, Victory guys. Lap. But it's, 
Yeah, yeah victory lap Dale stands Jr. out, obviously. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh, I'm not gonna remember any of the names now, and I'm, I'm feel bad. But uh, it always, one. yeah, yeah. Cop just out of frame is good. Uh, whatever the, but it's just a good record overall um, from start to finish. It's made me really excited to see what the next record's gonna be like. Um, it should be coming out shortly, so that will be exciting. But uh, we'll uh, we'll see what what happens. You know, they've had kind of like their highs and lows, but really consistent over the last few years like even failed states even if i don't love it is like you know it's obviously an impressive record oh i'm looking at the list now failed imagineer obviously yeah, too is really awesome say. too so oh and adventures in zucosis um as like the final like propaganda has a good history of having good final tracks and i think that's another really good one so um yeah i'm gonna go s tier and feel really good about it i'm excited for what propaganda has got in store for 2025 or whatever so Oh yeah, Dylan. Where are you putting propaganda? I see that D tier down there. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I just don't like him, man. I don't. I. It's not that I don't. I don't hate this album or anything. I think it's a good album, but for my tastes, it's just not something I'm gonna seek out and listen to. So, it's just a D due to sheer indifference. That's all it is. I think D it's a for indifference. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, like, like uh. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say it's like orchestra music. Like, it's very impressive and everything and very cool, but I'm not going to listen to orchestra music. So, that's fair. It goes in the D. You peasant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to be an enlightened uh, progressive metal enjoyer, which is like what Propagandi kind of turned into <laughs> recently, which I, I think some of that charm wears off a little bit on Victory Lap where I think some of the songs go on a little too long. They get a little too, I don't know, it's like progressive rock in a lot of ways, where it's just like a lot of like long buildups and instrumental stuff. And uh, the songs that are like really good are definitely the more straightforward ones like Victory Lap and Failed Imagineer. But I still think this is like technically definitely like the best record, one of the best records that are here. And I think Victory Lap and Failed Imagineer are better songs than anything else that's on here um and for that alone i gotta go s tier for propagandi victory lap though it's not my favorite propagandi the sweet spot for me is always uh today's empires yeah. through supporting cast is where i think it was like their best three album run in my opinion and so Potem potemkin rules so much yeah. it's so good yeah. so yeah. i think i think i gotta go with it even though um I don't go back to listen to it. And even when I was listening to it, I took like a break in between. <laughs> but it is like definitely like technically a fantastic record. And the songs that are good are really fucking good. So, John, what do you have to say? Yeah, um, I don't like it quite as much as you and Lewis. But I this is like for me, this is a windows down car album more than anything. But I, I'm kind of with you, Elliot. I, I think Victory Lap and Failed Imagineer, like the two straightforward songs are my favorite and like i kind of get lost on a couple tracks so there's like a lot going on and the runtime gets a little you know out of my comfort zone but there's still like enough really good songs on here where it's going to be an eight tier album i still listen to it quite a bit you know i think we just had it on the epitaph bracket too i think it's probably like my fourth favorite propaganda album if i'm thinking correctly so i'm gonna go let's go a I think in A and my A and B, there's a big gap between those two also. Yeah. All right. What's the next record here, John? Up next, we have uh, Lesson Jake, Silver Linings. All right. Dylan, go ahead and start us off. Lesson Jake, Silver Linings. I think for a moment, uh, John thought I was going to have this in S over Frenzel Rom, which is a very misguided Over Pennywise, I, I did. I thought you were going to have it over Pennywise yeah. um, <laughs> as well. No, like when when we were about to do Frenzel, you like said, uh, oh, I don't know. He might have something else over this. Yep. Um, Maybe. The, the Pennywise album is more exciting, I would say. This is more of a say for like monkey wrench myself i mean the rest of the album is pretty mid-tempo <laughs> um i think it's a fine album i don't think it would be in my top five less than jake albums and um it's going in the a tier fair that's fair 
Um, Lewis, why don't you go ahead and go next? Yeah, I'm kind of waffling about my last two here, going back and forth, but I'm going to stick with what I my guts were, and I'm I'm going to put less than Jake Silver Linings in B. Um, I think it's a pretty good record. I mean, it. I don't know. I mean, it's, there's nothing really objectionable about it, but nothing really stuck with me about this record. I think it was fine from like throughout, but it definitely doesn't hit like anything from like the early 2000s. Less than Jake, so it's it's a good record. Um, I'll probably throw some of the songs onto a shuffle, but I don't see myself like listening religiously from like front to back on this record again. So it's significantly better than the C tier records, though, for sure. And I think better than I think I'll enjoy it more than some 41 for sure. So I would rank it higher than that. But it's it's in my B tier. It's pretty good. All right, John, what do you have to say? I love this album. I, I, I feel like this is the closest they've got to Anthem since anthem i think any time and anywhere is one of my favorite less than jake songs um high cost low living dear me the single i think is pretty good like dylan said monkey wrench um i i think this is my favorite album on the entire list uh, i think it's underrated i had it in my a less than jake tier which which may be false but i think it's comparable sounding to anthem if you take away the uh the nostalgia then i think they're pretty similar so i'm, I'm gonna go s tier silver linings yeah. all right I, I would say this is like the like the best record they've done since like gainesville florida i'd compare it to that one more than i would anthem <clears throat> uh, in a lot of ways though they are a little i understand it's a little bit more of like a pop pop, pop sound. Yeah. i guess i guess Ga i mean gainesville is as well i guess it has like a few darker tinted songs um but um, I think it's on par with Gainesville, Florida. I thought this was like a pretty good less than Jake record. I, I don't think it's on par with Anthem, not even close, yeah. but I think it's a, a pretty solid record. And I, I, I do also think it's better than the Sum 41 record. So I'm going to mulligan uh, Sum 41 down to B. I think I do agree with you guys, the length, and there is some bloat tracks on there. And the less than Jake record is definitely better than the Sum 41 one. And I'm going to put uh, less than Jake silver linings in my A tier. So I think it's a solid nice. Less Than Jake record. I have to mention as well, there's a <clears throat> stark contrast in the lyrics on this album from most of the other previous Less Than Jake stuff, and there's an obvious reason for that. So, All yes. right. And we'll go to the final record here, which is going to be The Descendants Hypercathium Spazinate. Um, and we'll start with Lewis here. And go, what do you have ah. to say about this one? Well, it's pretty obvious where this one's going to land, but this was the one that I was kind of waffling between less than Jake. I, I, I kind of like these records, the same field, but I think Descendants is going to edge it out. Um, I I think I gave this Descendants record like my S tier when we went through the rankings, and I, and I still stand by that. Like, it was one of my S's. Like, I think this is a really strong Descendants record. It's, it's pretty much what you expect. It's kind of like... Uh, from 90, like, because I like new Descendants. I'll be honest. Sorry, haters on the internet, but anything past 95 is probably, for me, more so than the other stuff. But this one feels like a logical conclusion of that development. Um, I think it's a little bloated. It's a pretty long record, but it's it's pretty strong overall. So um, this could have been between A and B, but I think I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to stick with A. I enjoyed this record quite a bit, and uh, I have gone back to it a few times. So, All right. Dylan, I didn't, what do you have to say? <clears throat> I didn't realize how long this album is. And they did a they did an EP right after it, I think, too. I don't know remember what it was called, but uh it had like an orange version of the cover. Um <clears throat> I think it's a perfectly acceptable descendants album. I think the sum is greater than its parts. Uh the only song I remember like standing on its own at any point was victim of me and i think it's because it was a single and that's not one of my favorite songs on the album so uh it's going in the last spot b tier right down the middle right yeah i think this is a really solid descendants record honestly i was pretty impressed listening to this i never i also never listened to this one before and uh honestly i think it's like better than cool to be you so Okay. I, I think oh, it's no <laughs> I think it has like maybe less standout, but I, I think it's a better record than that. Uh, almost. So I, I think it's just like 
it, it, in a lot of ways, it's like a, a nice combination of between like the newer descendants and the 80s descendants, where it's this kind of merger of the two, where it's just kind of these minute 20 long punk songs, just nonstop back and forth. And I think it achieves like kind of in the same vein of what the Frenzel Rom record does. So I think it achieves like kind of the same feeling in a lot of ways, where it's just kind of these fast songs, though it is a little long. And so I don't think it's as good as the Frenzel record by any means. But I, I do actually think this is probably better than the Less Than Jake record. And I'm going to put it in my A tier. A look on John's face when oh. you compared it to a Cup of Pestilence. <laughs> it looked like you had farted in his mouth. It was so oh, bad. That is, that is... This, here, this is what I feel about this album. If you take away the name Descendants, nobody would care about this album. I, it's like very, very middle of the road. Like Dylan said, there's not a ton of standouts. I, I, I think Without Love is my favorite song on here, one of the slower ones. But despite the name and despite some of the songs being short, the album just feels so long. And not just because there's 21 songs. I, I just, I don't really hear a lot of interesting stuff going on on this on the album and i consider d tier even but i mean they're blessed by the competition yeah. here so i'm gonna i'm gonna put it in c but I, I i think this is just descendants and if you take that away it's just it's just not very good not very interesting so i'm gonna go uh oh, prepare, for, <clears throat> prepare for your hate john you bring it on for it. punk rock is about <laughs> individuality until somebody disagrees with you that's just the way it is it's true yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, think for yourself, but you have to like all the same records. Yep. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't have no effects in the S tier. I can't believe you didn't have Lagwagon in the S tier. How did you not have all of these albums in the S tier? <laughs> I mean, you not one. heard? Have you not heard Supercharged? Do you not have a soul? It's amazing. <laughs> Go on. I think I think the only one people I, I guarantee I'll read the comment where it's just like Pennywise and S, but Descendants and Bad Religion. In, in whatever tier they have, 100%. Kill it's yourself. It's just this random amount of Pennywise hate for no reason. I feel like people don't even know why they dislike Pennywise. Like Dylan, yeah. he's coming to be a Pennywise fan. Every time he listens to a record, he's like, actually, that was good. So, Anybody who likes punk rock and is like, Pennywise sucks, I mean, I just feel like they're being disingenuous. Like, I mean, it has. I do too. It's the most basic thing it's the most core of it it's so good I don't know I, like, I, like i said when i introduced when i was younger and people asked me what i listened to i'd show them like a pennywise song first and be like basically this the different variations of this yeah <laughs> so i don't know the pennywise hate is uh i think it's unfounded i think people are kind of forcing themselves they're like they all sound the same i'm like who cares like what the fuck like, do so you does like every other fucking know? band yeah why the fuck genre. do you care who cares if they all sound the I same? i play all this stuff for my normie girlfriend and they all sounds the same to her anyways it doesn't yeah, matter exactly. so, uh, but what's it called i don't think do we have any records that were universal no no, none of Penny us. Pennywise was no, the me, closest. Oh, me, I'd say. me and you had the same D tier, Lewis. Well, no, Frenzel Rum. Right. We almost all had S. Oh, yeah. almost all had S. Yeah. The common denominator, Frenzel Rum. I would say we're, clo I don't know, we're a little bit more scattered, but we're also pretty close. It's still pretty consistent, to, you know, except for Dylan throwing Victory Lap in D tier, uh, under No Effects' <clears> double <throat> album, which is totally yeah, that seems like an abomination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've listened but, to the No Effects album more than I have the Propagandi album, so that's my only metric I used for that. I don't know why you're torturing yourself like that, but uh, yeah, I also, like No Effects more than Propagandi. That's fine. <laughs> Even at their worst. Even at their worst. Uh, but yeah, I guess let's uh, finish this up here. Uh, John, anything you're promoting now? Any new records coming out on the website? The OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, Dylan um, and me's OnlyFans. We so. have a we have a pre-order. Well, the album is out digitally, but it's Rain Check, High Bro, Low Bro, is out now for fans of Kid Dynamite, the Loved Ones, uh, Pinhead Circus. Uh, you'll really, the album is really freaking good. So go check that out. I should have the vinyl early November. We got the hoodies shipping now, and uh, two more pre-orders by the end of the year. So keep an eye out on. Uh, is it limited run dot punk rock radar or punk rock radar dot limited run? second one second yeah, one punk oh, it's, rock radar <laughs> dot limited run it's down it's below or you could just get there from uh, punkrockradar.com if you're like me and you can't remember that so uh yeah let's wrap this up guys uh elliot's got a new mix of bands we're gonna do for a uh, part three which is pretty interesting some records i haven't heard in like 15 years so join the discord we'll probably reveal them there first so, um, yeah, join the Discord anyway, so you can hang out and 
give us ideas and just talk punk rock 24 7 but we'll wrap this one up as always thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys all next time hey